Hi there, thanks for joining me. In this video, I'm going to show you how to embellish digital artwork using acrylic gel medium. Acrylic gel medium is basically clear acrylic paint that you can apply to artwork to give it texture and depth. You can make it look like it was painted with real paint. You can do a lot of things with it. I'm using uh, Golden Brand gel medium. It comes in a lot of different types depending on what you want to do. I like the semi-gloss better than the matte or the gloss. Um, and I like regular gel, so that's what I'm going with. The print I have is from Walgreens. I ordered it on their website and picked it up from the store. It's very important that you use a very particular kind of photo paper. I'm using uh, Fuji Film Crystal Archive paper, and this is not inkjet paper. It's exposed using light. So what that means is that I can get this photo wet and the ink will not smear because there's no ink uh, being used to make the print. I can also put this gel on it without having to worry about ruining the piece. So you may be able to do this with other types of prints. You may be able to do it with inkjet prints. I haven't tried it, but I would recommend just go ahead and order your prints from Walgreens. And then you'll know that you're getting good paper. I also have a glass of water, as you'll need that to clean your brushes. And for this piece, I'm going to use just this little detail brush and this plastic palette knife. I just have a bunch of cheap brushes here. I'm not really hip to spending a lot of money on brushes for something like this because I'm just smearing some goop on a photo. And I have a paper towel in case I need to clean up. So we'll go ahead and get started. Really all you have to do is just put the gel on your photo the way you want to put it on there. And that's going to depend on what your image is. So what I recommend doing is trying to apply the gel in a way that complements the piece. So you don't want to just put it on like you're making a sandwich or something. That's not going to look very appealing. You want to follow the brush strokes that are in the piece and you want to complement all of the shapes. So I'm going to do the background separately than the flower petals and the stems. So I'm going to try to make it look like it's kind of popping out. Um, for some of my other pieces, I'll vary the texture. I might use this foam brush on the background to give the background a sandy texture and then do the foreground with the brush to make it smoother and there'd be some contrast there. So that's another thing you can do. So I'm going to use my palette knife here. I'm just going to apply a little bit of this gel. I'm going to try not to really do any of the flower petals yet. I'm just kind of putting on a thin layer just to get some on there. And then I'm going to spread it around with my smaller brush. So you want to make sure that you cover all of your photo or your print because if you leave any gaps, those gaps are really going to stick out. This is glossy paper so you'll be able to see any spots that you missed. Towards the end we'll kind of give it a once over to make sure that we got everything. This gel does dry kind of quickly so what you want to do is you want to do small sections at a time because if you just put a whole bunch on there and you go back and you start painting on it, what will happen is it will start to clump up uh, as it dries and it will peel off. So when you're applying this you want it to be pretty thin and pretty wet. If you need to, you can add a little bit of water, but I don't recommend doing that too much because you'll thin it down more than you need to. You just want to you want to keep dipping your brush fairly often, and if you feel like you're starting to pull up any of this gel because it's getting too dry, just kind of be careful. Try not to uh, try not to mess it up by painting on it too hard. You want to avoid using anything that's um, 
jagged or sharp, so watch out for your brushes because these prints are very durable, but if you scratch them with something sharp, you will scratch off the color. Uh, you also want to watch out for hair, because hair and dust and everything will get stuck in this gel, and when it dries, you'll see all these nice hairs in your piece that you won't be able to get out because they'll be more or less permanently embedded in your piece. And the reason why I'm using this palette knife is because um, it puts on the acrylic a little bit faster. It covers larger areas. I had a brush that was a little bit bigger than this that I was using for this piece, but I used it so much that I broke the tip off. So normally I would use that brush, which is a little bit bigger, to fill in some of these larger areas. But since I don't have it, I'm just going to use this guy to fill in the larger areas. I'm going to avoid this stem because I want to paint that in separately because I'm going to use a different uh, technique for that. So we're going to avoid the stem and I'm going to be pretty careful about putting this stuff on, but you don't have to be super accurate. You can be a little sloppy here, that's okay. You'll notice I got a little bit of gel on the petals, that's not the end of the world. This looks white now, but when it dries, it will dry clear. Um, depending on how thick you put this on, will determine how long you have to wait for it to dry clear. So in this case, I'm not putting it on really, really, really thick. I'm just doing it just thick enough to where it gives the impression that this was painted. Uh, with a real brush and real paint, rather than digitally. This is a nice way to take something like digital art, which people don't always appreciate because it's digital, it takes it and it makes it something unique and something physical that might be more appealing to art collectors. I think it's really nice that once this is done, uh, you can touch this and you can feel the texture and because this print only costs 10 or 20 cents it's not going to be the end of the world if somebody runs their finger across it and, and touches it. You don't have to stress so much and I think it's nice to be able to touch art. I've gone to art galleries around here and I've just pointed at areas I like and the ushers have gotten upset with me just for pointing too close so you know, of course people don't like it when you touch their art but I think with this gel, it encourages people to want to touch your art, and the gel kind of protects it. I don't think it's going to hurt it to, to let people touch your prints. It might get them more interested in it. So you'll notice these directions that I've been painting, I'm following the directions of the brush strokes that were underneath. I wasn't going in some arbitrary direction against it. And I'm, like I said, I'm not making a sandwich here. I'm not putting mayonnaise on a piece of bread and just spreading it on there. I'm, trying to paint over it, I'm trying to paint brush strokes over brush strokes. So we've got our background, it looks pretty even there. And then we'll do the stem. The stem, I forgot about this brush, I have this nice brush for uh, doing stems and things. It's got a nice long tip here, so what you want to do is you want to get it nice and saturated. So I'm kind of twisting it pulling it through the gel here. I want to avoid getting a big clump on the end like that. I just want it to be kind of all evenly coated. Something like that. The trick is you want to push down and then twist, rotate, and lift. That way uh, your little glob of gel sticks and then as you twist it kind of pulls it off of your brush. So what I want to try to accomplish here is to get a nice uh, thick stem. Because if I just do it in individual brush strokes, it's, gonna, it's not going to work the same way. So it can take some magic touch. You'll see I kind of twisted and a little bit more gel here. Place it down and then just twist and it will 
pull it off of there. A little bit more. I think because I'm doing this in the video, it's not working quite as well as it normally does. There we go. And you can see we've got a nice thick stem. It's really going to stick up now. If we brushed it on, what would have happened is it would have pushed the paint away to the sides and it wouldn't have stuck up as much. So, since I have a little extra gel on here, I don't want to waste it. This gel isn't terribly expensive, but I do go through it pretty quick because uh, besides these little 4x6 prints, I do some prints that are huge and wall-sized, and I'll go through a couple of these for one of those. Um, these are pretty affordable at an art supply store. There's a good one here in Seattle that specializes only in art supplies, uh, because I found that Aaron Brothers and the craft stores have this stuff marked up a little bit more. So can get a pretty good deal on it. And they sell them in big, big tubs too. So I'm going to go ahead before this little blob dries and I'm going to put on some more gel here just to work with. I'm just kind of just putting it on there and then I'm going to spread it around with my smaller brush. So again, what I want to do is I want to enhance these petals by painting with them, painting in the direction that they flow. And by doing that, it's going to make it look more realistic, and it's going to make it look more like a traditional painting would had I painted this with acrylic paint. I'm going to have a little rotating the brush trick works to kind of pull off the extra gel. I'm going to stay out of the middle, out of the center part of the flower, because I'm going to do something similar to the stem and use a different brush technique for that. I can do these pretty quick. Um, if I wasn't doing this in the video and talking through the whole thing, I'd probably be done with this by now. But I kind of want to walk you through it. You don't have to do these fast, and you also don't really have to take your time. It's kind of up to you how you want to do it. I find that because these are a bit smaller, when I sell them in galleries, people kind of have the expectation that things that are 4 by 6 size, if they aren't framed, even if they're in an acrylic bag, people expect to kind of pay what they would pay for a card. Um, and even though this is a hand embellished piece, I still have to kind of make my prices competitive, so when I do these, I try to do these pretty quick. I can keep the cost lower. And I find that some pieces work really well. This piece in particular already kind of looks like acrylic paint. It's got a lot of nice flat just kind of broad shapes, basic colors, nothing too fancy, nothing with too much detail, and it lends really well to this texture. I've experimented with other pieces, and you'll find that they just don't need gel. There's too, if there's too much detail, and the detail's too small, and there's too much going on, there's kind of no reason to add gel to that kind of piece, so you'll have to go through your collection and see what you have. You can also make pieces this was interesting for me because there's a lot of pieces that I made that I wasn't that impressed with after the fact as digital art, but they lend really well to uh, mixed media art after adding this gel to them. I think this is really fun. Once once I discovered this, I kind of it kind of became my thing now. Most of my prints that I do, I have this gel to, uh, assuming that they're, you know, pieces that work with the gel. And if they don't, then, you know, again, I don't bother adding 
and gel to them. I'll just kind of leave them as is. It's fun to experiment. You can mix different things with this gel. If you wanted to put sand in it or glitter, you could do that. And we got one more petal area here. Again, I'm following the contours of all the petals. I get these big areas here that seem to take forever with the little brush. That's the time to use a palette knife. Just to speed it up a little bit. And be careful not to touch it if you can. I'm keeping my finger just kind of on the corner there where I'm not going to smudge anything because if I touch this, that's really going to mess things up. As it gets dry, it gets really sticky. And if you touch it, you're going to pull it up and it's going to tear off and then you're going to have this weird area. So I'm going to try to keep this pretty pristine and pretty, pretty wet when you're working on it. I'm just going to go up to the center part. I'm going to try to just kind of stay off of it for the meantime. And then the center part here, I'm going to get a lot of thick, clumpy gel on the end of my brush. And I'm just going to kind of try to, try to let the painting, try to let the, the print pull the gel off. So I'm kind of tapping it on there, doing short little drags, and I'm trying to leave some big, thick clumps on there. I'm kind of trying to follow the direction. There's this radial pattern that comes out of the center of these flowers that I'm trying to enhance. Go ahead and go to the other side now. And the other flower, and paint that in. I'm trying to just paint this in real quick here so this video isn't too long. These are kind of fun to do. thing we'll do is we will just give it a visual check because I find that I always think that I got this thing pretty well covered and then I look at it and I rotate it around in the light and in the light you'll be able to see any spot you missed will really really stick out because once this gel is on here it's going to give it a semi I would say it's going to have a semi matte finish because this particular print is already gloss, so the semi-gloss gel is kind of making it less glossy. So you're going to be able to see the very glossy areas of the photo that you missed. You'll be able to see them through the semi-gloss gel. And then all you have to do is just brush a little bit of gel on them and they'll go away and then you'll be looking good. Okay, and then for the center the flower, I'm going to do the same thing. I did center the other one. I'm just going to try to just really clump this gel on there. Okay, so very carefully now. You may want to wait till your piece dries a little bit more than I'm going to wait. But I don't have time to wait. I'm just going to pick it up and carefully, I'm kind of looking at it closely and looking at it in the light. And if I rotate it around, I can see the places that I missed quite easily because they really stand out. So I'm just going through and lightly painting over them. You want to have some gel on your brush, but you don't want to have too much because if you don't have any, you may accidentally pull up some dried gel or partially dried gel and that 
might not be good. So you don't want to ruin the piece, you just want to fix it. So I'm just getting a little bit of gel here and there. Put it on. It's not uncommon to miss spots. So you probably will need to do this every time at the end. These spots that you miss really stand out. I don't think that they necessarily look bad on every piece. On some pieces they look good, they're kind of little highlight areas. But on other pieces they really stand out and kind of distracting. This gel is meant to enhance the piece, not obscure it or ruin it. And I find that through experimentation uh, you can get both kinds of results sometimes. Uh, I've put gel on stuff and just completely ruined it because it, either the application was bad, I used too much gel or I used the wrong kind of gel, or the gel just didn't work with the piece. So this is something you have to just try out and see what works and what doesn't. But again, you can see I spent a lot of time doing this very intentionally. I didn't just smudge it on there. I didn't just go and goop it on there. It would have been faster, but it wouldn't have been the exact same effect that I have here. And this, when it dries, will look very good. I have these available for sale on my Etsy page. And if you go to my Etsy store, you can take a look at the finished versions of these. People really like these things. These sell a lot. Uh, not just this particular piece, but most of the embellished prints I do. And you can do larger ones. Like I mentioned, I do them in all sizes. I just find that these particular 4x6 prints from Walgreens are very good quality prints on very good quality paper that works well with the gel medium and they're cheap, they're 10 or 20 cents depending on if you get them on sale or not. You might be able to get a better deal on these kind of photos but again what's important is that you get archival quality paper that's not going to get ruined by the gel so I know for sure that Fujifilm Crystal Archive paper works really well because I've been using it and I haven't had any issues with it, so I recommend that you use that as well. Same thing with the gel. I know there's some other manufacturers of gel, but I'm using Golden and I haven't had any problems with this. I've been very satisfied with this product. Brushes don't matter. These are the cheapest brushes I could get. So you don't need to really worry about spending a lot of money on brushes because these brushes can be expensive. Uh, this is a nylon brush. I recommend that you use uh, synthetic brushes because if you use something like this that has hair, animal hair, those little hairs are going to break off and they're going to get stuck in your gel and that's no good. So if you shed hair a lot or you have pets and a lot of pet hair and a lot of dust and debris and dirt around, make sure you get rid of that or you're going or you go somewhere and work somewhere where you're not going to have all that stuff get into your piece. Because if it does get in there, it's really, really hard to get out and it really stands out. What you'll have to do is you'll have to get an X-Acto knife and try really carefully to cut it out and that might not even work. So I recommend watching out for that. But after this dries, you'll have a nice finished embellished piece uh, that you can frame or mat or just leave it as is. You can do a lot of, these, a lot of stuff with these. So. Hopefully that uh, sparked some interest in getting into using this gel. If you have any questions, feel free to comment on this video and I'll get back to you. If you found this information useful, take a quick second to like this video or share it on YouTube or Facebook and that'll make it easier for other artists out there to find this information. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for my next video.